I will shuffle myself back. And we'll start seated. We started standing on Monday night, so we'll start seated today. Um, and you can find what is a comfortable seated position for you. I'm in the what's called half lotus, but you could just be in the cross leg, which is called Sukhasana, which is um, also called easy pose, which is nice. So most of the um, most of the poses have a, a really like easy pose, horse pose, fairly simplistic English names from their Sanskrit. But choose a, a position that's comfortable for you for just a, a few moments. I'd like to take a warrior two flow today and take a little bit of a dancing warrior because I feel like there may be a little bit of stuck energy and it might be nice to kind of move it through and go with a little bit of a flow plus we have a new moon on the horizon so a whole new lunar cycle is starting up so getting rid of any of that stuck energy from the last lunar cycle might be a nice thing to think of and to kind of broach at this stage as we about to, to hit up with a new moon. So let's take a few moments to close down our eyes. And this is just a settling in period where you let go of whatever's gone on in your day. So, you know, you may have kids at home that you're homeschooling or setting them up for that. Um, you may be working from home. I filmed a hip class this morning, so that was nice and sweaty outside. Um, so just with eyes closed down, we just let all of that dissolve. I like to think of the mat, the space that we're about to set up. That's the middle point. And everything that's happened before, we just let dissolve away. Let it just fall away from your mind or from your awareness. And anything that you may have on after this 60 minutes or so, just leave that on the other side of your mat. So we're not, not gonna say we're not going there, but we're just gonna try our best to keep our awareness within the four corners of the mat that we are on and in this space. So with eyes closed down, we just take a little bit of time to settle in, connect to your breath. It's really nice here just to start to observe how you're breathing. And once I tell you to observe, you'll straight away notice, you'll start to slow it down and maybe even deepen it just unconsciously. And that's okay. I don't think we are really aware of our breath from moment to moment unless we're being drawn or unless someone like me is saying, become aware of your breath and notice how you're breathing. So breath practice can be a, a very simple form of meditation and you just start to notice your breath and I want you just to, to concentrate here on a just nice gentle drawing in of the breath through the nostrils and then a nice softness that results as we exhale and see if we can focus more on as we draw the breath into our body where allowing this beautiful expansion and the expansion is through the front the back and the sides rather than uh, lifting up through the shoulders there will be a slight lift up through the collarbones but as best we can keep a softness through the shoulders and a softness through the arm and relax your jaw and unclench your teeth you may have had a really big morning and i know that some of you that are working from home this may be the first break that you've had. And so let some of that pent up stress or frustration that may have been occurring in your morning, let it all just start to kind of subside and ebb away. And you can actually even have the intention of each breath out as a way to just breathe out any stress or any kind of resistance that you have in your body at the moment to just sitting here and settling into our yoga space. Let it out with your out breath. And now start to, as your breath flows through the body, start to let yourself take a little scan through your physical body here. So just let your head gently move from side to side and a little up and down. 
give the shoulders a bit of a roll and, and it's just really for you to check in and see how does my physical body feel. I can tell you that my shoulders are a little tight when I do this because I've filmed a pump class this week, two hip classes and a body conditioning as well as so the, the yoga and the yoga doesn't really give me tension and tightness but my shoulders are a little tight from using heavier weights and my biceps are a little sore so that's not an injury that's just my awareness oh I can feel my shoulders are a little tight so maybe I'll take a you know a little bit more time to stretch through the upper back is feeling it a little too for some dead rows and deadlifts so that's the kind of thing I'm talking about but there also may be as you move through your chest and into your belly we often hold a lot of stress and tension in our belly so you might find there's tension or, or restriction through that belly area. See if you can soften it a little bit. But this is your chance just to explore the body and see if there's anything that arises for you that you may not have been aware of previously. So I can think we get caught, well, before pre, pre our isolation and working from home, we get caught up in the, the busyness of our lives. And to be quite honest, I'm not sure whether working from home has made us any less busy. And I think those of you that are working from home would probably be there nodding, saying, I'm just as busy, if not busier. So we still don't take that time to, to really check into our body and see what's going on because, you know, where a lot of us are tethered to our desks and with headphones on and meeting after meeting. So I really encourage you, if you can, not just while you're on your yoga mat, but if you can take a a few minutes each day just to check in and see how you're feeling and where's that tension and tightness. Now, surprisingly for me today, my hips aren't tight and they're usually always tight. So that's a bonus. And that's something that I am aware of and I notice and I'm like, wow, there's softness and a little bit of subtlety and um, it, it feels nice through my hips and glutes and hip flexors today. Bonus. So you may find there are different things that arise for you that, you know, it's not all tension and tightness. There's softness and um, maybe a subtleness that arises in your body. Now my cat's about to jump up onto the chair. Can you in? Oi, no. Okay, let's come back to your breath now. And now we're gonna take a little bit of a, a slower and deeper breath here and take what's called a, a yogi breath. Sometimes it's called deep belly breath. Sometimes um, it's just called a diaphragmatic breath because we want to really sink that diaphragm down. And it's nice to take a hand on your belly and a hand on your chest here just to feel this breath travel all the way down. So as you take your next inhale, close your eyes, draw the breath in through the nostrils, follow it down the back of the throat and all the way through the lungs, let the diaphragm muscle drop a little and let that breath land into your belly or as close as you can to that lower torso. And then feel an expansion from that point through the front, through the back, through the sides, and then let that breath continue to rise all the way back up into the chest. Now, at the peak of your inhale, your collarbones will lift just a little, but you'll feel your ribcage expand to the edges or beyond your skin. And then slowly on the exhale, breath leaves the top of the lungs, the bottom of the lungs, the diaphragm muscle shifts back up. And as that breath lastly leaves the belly, that navel draws softly in towards your spine. So with eyes closed down, allow yourselves just a few of these yogic, diaphragmatic, deep belly breaths. Now, this is a really lovely breath that you can sink into during your day. Maybe, you know, if you're at your desk and you're feeling that you need a little break, just stop and take three of these diaphragmatic breaths and let your breathing slow down, let your heart rate slow down. Just take a, a little bit of time to connect to your breath and break up your day just a little. I've got a cat going wild here. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see what he does. All right, let's close down our eyes or keep them closed. Just take one more breath here. 
And then we're going to start to move around the mat. Now, because we're taking a Warrior 2 flow today, which is open hip. Monday nights, we took Warrior 1 and Warrior 3. And today, I want to take that Dancing Warrior, which we've done before, but we will need to open up a little bit into the hips. So we'll take some moves that will do that for us, get the hips a little bit open. So let's peel the eyes open now. And as you take your next inhale, Bring the hands towards the ceiling to meet in prayer and exhale, guide the hands just to the heart and take two more breaths like that. Inhale, hands lift, exhale down. One more breath. Now this time as you exhale, can we bring the hands all the way to your navel or solar plexus? Interlace the fingers here. With a nice deep breath, draw the hands towards the chin with the elbows nice and high. And then on the exhale, round through the spine, chin to chest, navel to spine. And then as you take your next inhalation, bring the hands towards the ceiling. And as you exhale, release the hands behind. So we get to interlace the fingers here, draw the hands towards the floor, lift a little up and away from the buttocks. And perhaps the neck gaze to the ceiling with a deep breath in. And then on the breath out, release the hands back to the heart. Inhale, lift the arms, let your fingers touch. And exhale, let the right hand come down, left arm reaches for the right. Now we're going to inhale, lift nice and tall, back through center. And exhale to the left. And let's go again. Inhale. And exhale. Hold on this side. See if you can soften that elbow just a little so that shoulder drops down and away from the ear. Press that right palm firmly into the mat. And let yourself just take three breaths here. A little lift and press away of the floor on the inhale. And then we drop that little bit deeper on the exhale. And again, lift on the inhale, lower on the exhale. One more breath. And then with your next inhalation, bring your hands back to me in prayer. Exhale, guide the hand all the way to your navel or solar plexus. Fingers interlaced here. Inhale, lift the hands towards the chin, elbows lift nice and high, and exhale, round through your spine, chin to chest, navel to spine. So with your next inhale, lift the arm. And on the exhale, can we bring the hands all the way to the floor behind us? Gently shift the weight back. Extend your feet out in front to find your diamond pose. So soles of the feet meet. So we're opening up a little through the hips and inner thighs here. Inhale to lift the arm. And then on the exhale, we're going to fold forward. So let your hands just come to the mat. Now they may, you can rest them on your feet if that's a, available for you or out in front of the feet. And see if we can take three breaths here. Little lift through the chest on the inhale. And then we just bring that chest forward and float down over the thighs on the exhale. So let's go again. Inhale to lift. Exhale down. So feel like you're bringing your heart or your chest to the front of the room a little before you lower down. One more breath. And then as you take your next inhalation, slide the hands towards the knees first. When they reach the knees, Draw the feet into about hip distance. I'm just going to turn side on so you can see what I'm doing here. Hands behind. So option here just to lift the chest. But you could also lift the buttocks and take a reverse tabletop. So gazing forward or eye gaze to the ceiling. But don't let your head hang back. So not looking behind you, either straight ahead or straight up towards the ceiling. If you're in reverse table, take a breath in. And on the breath out, if you had your buttocks lifted off the floor, lower them back down. And then from here, we can all find that comfortable seated position. Once again, inhale, lift the arms towards the ceiling. Exhale, bring your hands to the heart space. Now we're going to take a twist to your left. So keep the hands in prayer. Inhale, lift the arm. And on the exhale, bring the right hand to the left knee. Left hand comes behind. So... Here we use the in-breath to lift and lengthen through the crown of the head and elongate the spine. And the out-breath, let your shoulder turn first. It'll let the rib cage and, and or it'll leave the rib cage and your chest. And then your head and neck can turn a fraction of a second behind. So think of your in-breath as a lift and lengthen. And 
and your out breath, shoulder, ribcage, chest, lastly that head and neck. So use your next inhale to bring the head and neck back through center first. Rest of the body can follow with the arms towards the ceiling to meet in prayer. And exhale, guide the hands all the way to the navel, interlace the fingers. Take your breath in, draw the hands towards the chin, elbows lift nice and high, and exhale round through your spine, chin to chest, navel to center. Inhale, lift the arm. And as you exhale, bring the hands behind, fingers interlace. Hands towards the floor, lift up and away from the buttocks. Feel the collarbones broaden as you draw the shoulders back. Send that gaze to the ceiling with the breath in. And then on your breath out, bring the hands back to the heart. Let's inhale, lift the arms, let your fingers touch. Exhale, the left hand comes down, right arm reaches to the left. Inhale, come back through center, lift nice and tall. Exhale, over to our right. And then back to the left. Inhale, fingers touch. Exhale to the left. Hold on this side. Soften the elbow. Let the shoulder drop down away from the ear. Three breaths. So we're pressing firmly through that left palm. On the inhale, press the floor away. Lift the torso a little. And on the exhale, reach and fold back down. Inhale to lift. Exhale, we soften. And feel that nice stretch down the right side of the body. One more breath. Lift a little on the inhale. Lower on the exhale. Inhale now, bring the hands back to me in prayer. And as you exhale, guide the hands once again towards the navel. Fingers interlace. Inhale, hands lift towards the chin, elbows nice and high. And exhale, round through your spine, chin to chest, navel to spine. Use your next inhalation. Lift the arm. Now we're going to take diamond pose again. So on the exhale, bring the hands to the floor behind you. Gently shift the weight back and extend the feet out in front. I'm just gonna turn side on for the second diamond pose. So we're gonna inhale and lift the arms and exhale, fold forward. So hands can anywhere. They can be on the feet, ahead of the feet, to the side of the ankle. Lift your chest on that inhale. So we're trying not to round through the spine here. We wanna draw the shoulder blades back. And on the exhale, we bring that breastbone or the chest or your heart forward. So inhale and lift a little here. And exhale, we reach that a little bit further. One more time, one more time. So as you take your next inhalation now, slide the hands back to the knees and then draw your feet in to hip distance and a little closer, hands come behind and you choose whether it's just a lift through the chest here or whether we take that reverse tabletop, lifting the buttocks, lifting through the pelvis, squeezing the glutes together, gazing forward or I gaze to the ceiling. Your choice here. Take one more breath in. And if you're in tabletop, reverse tabletop, on the breath out, lower the buttocks. And so all of us now, can find that nice, comfortable seated position. And then we'll take that twist to the right. So inhale, lift the arms, fingers touch. Exhale, left hand finds the right knee, right hand comes behind. So inhale to lift and lengthen. Crown of the head lifts nice and tall. We elongate through the spine. Exhale, shoulder, ribcage, chest. Lastly, your head and neck turn to the back of the body. So each breath in is that lift and lengthen through the crown of the head. And each breath out, we work a little bit deeper, shoulder, ribcage, chest, lastly the head and neck. So use your next inhale, bring the head and neck back to center. Rest your body can follow. Hands lift towards the ceiling to meet in prayer and exhale, guide the hands just to your heart. Hold here for a breath and think about how you might like to transition to your hands and knees. Any way you get there is fine. I like to inhale, lift the arms to shoulder lift towards the ceiling. Exhale, bring the hands out in front, shift the weight into the hands, uncross the feet, and draw your knees underneath your hips, your hands underneath your shoulders, and now we come to tabletop, not the reverse kind, the normal kind. 
to take a little bit of cat and cow just to warm through your spine. So let's inhale, let that belly drop, draw the chest forward, gaze forward or eye gaze to the ceiling. And then exhale, round through your spine, chin to chest, navel to spine. Now let's close down our eyes here and take a, about four or five of these cat and cow. In your own time, you can go as slow or as fast as you feel. No right or wrong speed here. It's just a nice way to move that spine forward and back. We've given it a little twist. We've moved it side to side. And then let's just find that nice neutral spine. And from here, we're going to inhale, take that right leg out behind. I'm going to turn front on so you can see. So right leg is out behind. We'll flex the foot. So as we inhale, lift a little through that leg and tap that foot around to your left. And then use your exhale to bring it all the way around to the right. And then inhale. So we're just getting the hips a little bit open. Tap to the left. Exhale, tap to the right. Here we go one more time. Inhale to the left. Exhale to the right. Let's hold here. Sole of the foot on the floor and slide that foot out a little away from you. And walk your hands off to the right side. Coming down onto your forearms or the palm of palms of your hands. Let's just move with the breath here. Yeah? As you inhale, gently shift the weight into your hands. And as you exhale, send the left buttock towards the left corner of your mat. Let's go again. Inhale to come forward. Exhale back. One more time. Inhale to come forward. Exhale back. So opening up through that adductor, inner thigh muscle. Come forward with your next inhalation. Press the floor away and walk the hands back onto the mat. Now, we're going to walk our hands all the way back to that knee. Inhale, lift the arms, let the fingers touch. And exhale, the right hand can come down. Spin, left hand reaches to the left. Darling, come here. My cat, sorry. <laughs> Inhale and lift. You know it's live when you're calling to your cat. <laughs> exhale and reach. This is our gate pose. So we're going to inhale now, let fingers touch. And exhale, let your left hand find the mat or the floor. And can we reach this right hand towards the left side? Now this is a really nice opening up down the right side of the body, yeah? Fingers on the right hand, reaching as far as we can. Pressing through the left palm of the hand. I'm gonna give you another option. I want you to notice how when we take this option, if you choose to, we change a little bit of the energy flow through the body. So right now it's coming from the outer blade of that right foot down the right side of the body out the right fingertips. But when we do this and let that right leg hover off the mat and take the right arm up towards the ceiling, we can feel that energy now flowing through the left palm up the arm and out the fingertips on the right hand. So we just change things up just a little. Now your option here also is to reach and take hold of the top of the foot and press that foot into the hand and just open up a little through the front of the quad. These are just options. And a little into the hip flex. Okay, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to put that foot down. So if you did take hold of the foot, release it back. If you did let it hover, place it onto the floor. Right hand can come back down onto the floor or mat. And we walk our hands back out in front. And before we leave this side, let's inhale, take the right arm up towards the ceiling. And exhale, float that arm underneath the left. Bring the right side of our face down onto the mat. Left hand can walk to the top of the mat and over to the right corner. So we're feeling this nice stretch through the back on the right side, the, right, the back of the right shoulder blade and opening up a little through the left side of the chest. One more breath. And then let's slide that left hand back underneath the shoulder. As you inhale, press the floor away, slide the right hand back up. And we'll take this right leg, bring it all the way around to the left. Now we want to tap the toes here 
As you inhale, gaze forward and on your exhale, slowly turn and look over your left shoulder. You should feel a nice stretch here through the top of the right hip and into the top of that glute. Feel as if you're drawing your left rib cage towards your left hip. And then use your next inhale to bring your head back through center. Take that right leg back towards the back of the room. Bend the leg here. Oh, my phone just fell. Take a breath in, lift the sole of the foot towards the ceiling. And on the exhale, draw the knee in towards the chest and step that foot between your hands at the front of the mat. Oh, lucky. Lucky it didn't fall face down. And inhale, lift your arms towards the ceiling. And can we exhale, find cactus arm. So I want you to feel like this left knee is drawing to the front of the mat, but the right heel is drawing back. Or even as if they're drawing towards the midline of the mat here. So we're squeezing those inner thighs together. Getting a little bit of an opening through the hip flexor on that left side. And then if you're ready, you could perhaps send the gaze towards the ceiling and draw those elbows a little closer towards the floor. And take one more breath in. And then on the breath out, release the hands to frame the front foot. Now let's slide those hips back. And we're just going to come into our Ardha Hanuman, so a half lift. And I'll turn the side on so you can see how that looks. Now, lots of people, when we come here, come this a completely different pose. When we're here in this Ardha Hanuman, we're setting up for splits. Not that I can do the splits, but eventually from here, you tuck your toes on your left leg and you slide back. My mat's not slippery, and you would attempt to come to the split pose. So really what we're doing here is giving this hamstring through the back of the right leg a nice deep stretch. So lift the chest as you inhale and bring the chest a little forward and lower it down on the exhale. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to turn back to face on from our Ardha Hanuman half splits. Let's send the weight back into that right leg. Left hand can stay on the mat and we'll inhale take the right arm up towards the ceiling just taking this Nice revolve lunge. Now, option to tuck toes on the left leg, lift the left knee and come to a high revolve lunge here. Take a deep breath in. On the breath out, release the right hand and also pop that left knee back down if you did lift it. And we'll just take that right knee back behind and take a little side to side move through the hips here. It might be nice to take a little bit of wag the tail. Inhale to gaze forward. Exhale, turn, look over the right shoulder. Inhale forward, exhale over the left. And just take a little bit of movement here on the mat. Maybe even a little bit of rolling through the hips. You can't see me front on, but I was just kind of taking a little bit of a rolling movement to kind of cat and cow with a hip circle before we take the other side. So from our tabletop and neutral spine now, take that left leg out behind, flex the foot, lift a little through the glute as you take your next breath in and tap that foot around to the right. So as we exhale, we tap it around to the left. Let's go again. Inhale, tap to the right, exhale to the left. One more time. I have two cats, but one has disappeared. You've never seen the other one. Exhale to the left and slide that foot out. So we're getting that nice stretch through this inner thigh. We're gonna walk our hands off to the left this time. So palms and forearms on the floor. Gently as you inhale, start to shift the weight into your hand. And as you exhale, send that right buttock towards the right corner of the mat. And then inhale to come forward. Exhale, we slide back. One more time. So feeling this nice opening up through the inner thigh, but maybe even getting a little bit of a stretch through the shoulders as you slide back. And let's come forward with our next breath in. Press the floor away. Walk your hands back onto your mat and then walk them back towards that knee. Inhale to lift the arm. 
fingers touch. There's my cat. Exhale, left hand comes down. Right arm reaches for the left elbow, darling. A little lift on the inhale. And go a little bit deeper on the exhale. Into this gate pose. And can we inhale, let your fingers touch. Exhale, now the right hand comes down. Left arm reaches. So again, notice that lovely stretch that comes down the left side of the body, the whole left side of the body. Now we're just going to change the focus a little bit here. Left arm can reach towards the ceiling. Left leg can hover off the mat as an option, as an option. Notice now we've got this nice flow of energy from the right palm through the chest out the left knee. Option to bend that left leg and take hold of the top of the feet and take that little kick back of that foot into the hand. One more breath. Release the foot if you did take that option. Place the foot back down on the floor. Bring that left hand back down and we'll walk our hands back onto the mat. And now we can inhale, take the left arm up towards the ceiling and exhale, slide that arm underneath the right. The left side of the face comes down onto the mat. Right hand walks to the top of the mat and over to that left corner. And just let's look underneath that right arm. One more breath. And then let's walk that right hand back underneath the shoulder as you inhale, press the floor away. So both hands are underneath the shoulders now. Use your next breath in to take that left leg all the way around, tap it to the right. Inhale to gaze forward. Exhale, slowly turn and look over your right shoulder. We're looking for a stretch around the top of the left hip, right on the top of that glute. A little bit of piriformis stretch here. One more breath. Inhale, take that head back through center and take that leg back around as well. Now we're gonna bend the knee. Use our next inhale, draw the knee in towards the chest. Stepping that foot between our hands at the front of the mat. Inhale, lift the arms. Nice low lunge here and exhale, let's find those cactus arms. So this time it's the right knee that's drawing to the front of the mat. It's just an energetic move. Left heel back, or you feel like they're both drawing into the middle of the mat. So we're getting that lumbar spine support and we're feeling that nice stretch through the hip flexor on the right side. From cactus arms, the option is to open up a little more. So from a side on view, I've taken just a tiny little back bend here and sent the gaze towards the ceiling. But everything is supported here so I'm not bending into that front leg and putting any pressure on my lower back. Inner thighs are squeezed together. Lumbar spine has a lot of support. Then I can take that little back bend, just a little one. Take a breath in. And on the breath out, release the hands to frame the front foot. And we'll slide those hips back. Now this is the Hanuman, the half split. So we're looking at a stretch down the back of the leg. Toes draw back towards the shin. Heel is pressing firmly into the mat. So just allow your breath here to draw yourself a little further into a forward fold. So keeping the chest lifted, keeping the back straight. Inhale to lift a little. Exhale, chest comes forward and now we lower it down over that front thigh. One more breath, one more breath. And then we can send the weight into that left foot. Right hand stays on the mat. Inhale, take the left arm up towards the ceiling here into a nice revolved lunge. And you have that option of tucking the toes on the right, the right knee and coming to a high revolved lunge here. Let's take a breath in. On the breath out, release the left hand. And release the left knee and let's take the, the right knee. Let's take the left knee behind. And can we walk our hand to hand to like that in front here and just warm up the shoulders, the forearms, the wrists. So as you inhale, come forward to a low plank. Exhale, halfway long. Inhale, press the floor away. Tuck your toes and exhale back to find an active child's pose. And do that again. Inhale to come forward. 
Exhale, halfway lower. Inhale, press the floor away. Exhale, back at your child's pose. We're going to do that just one more time. Inhale to come forward. This time on the exhale, lower all the way to the floor. Go as slow as you can. Hands a fraction wider than your shoulders. Elbows hugging in here. Let's inhale, lift and find the cobra. Now, as you exhale, relax your shoulders down away from the ears. Hug the elbows in, squeeze your glutes, send your gaze forward. Take a nice deep breath in and lower to the floor as you breathe out, hands under shoulders. Lift through that nice low plank on your inhale. On your exhale, lift the knees and find your way back to your downward facing dog. Now from here, can you inhale and lower the knees just to hover over the mat and then exhale back, find down dog. Do that again, inhale to hover your tabletop. Exhale back down the facing dog. And one more time. Inhale. And exhale. Now let's hold in our down dog. Let's adjust our hands. We want them shoulder width. Spread the fingers nice and wide. Two piece fingers face the front of the room. Let's look at our feet. Hip distance here. And can we take some time to pedal our feet? So what you're doing here is lifting onto your toes and letting one heel at a time come down towards the mat to warm up even more through the backs of your legs. Hello, Finn. <laughs> and then come to stillness in your down dog. Take a nice deep breath, lift onto your toes. And as you exhale, turn your heels to the right and the knees and press the floor away. And then can we turn the heels to the left, bend the knees and press the floor away. And then come back to your down dog. You can either here walk or step or jump your feet to the front of the mat with your next breath in. So look between your hands. Maybe you come up onto your toes and take a little spring forward with an inhale. Maybe you step, maybe you walk. On the exhale, let your chest rest onto your thighs, bend your knees, take hold of opposite elbows and let your body just swing and sway in this ragdoll pose. And then bring your hands to the floor and as you inhale, take a super slow spiral roll, your bones stack on bone. Let your head and neck be the last things that rise. Keep your eyes closed down if that's available. So we're just in our Tadasana, palms of the hands face the front of the room, eyes are closed down. Bring a little bit of awareness to the soles of your feet. Imagine that your feet have four corners, big toe, pinky toe, inner heel, outer heel, and you're attempting to distribute your weight throughout those four corners. Let your awareness travel up the body and as it reaches the knees, soften the knees, but gently draw your kneecaps up towards the pubic bone, Pubic bone towards the navel, tailbone towards the floor, and then give your shoulders a roll up, back and down. So your shoulder blades draw gently in towards your spine. Palms of the hands are facing the front of the room. Take one more breath in, and then I'll face front on. And then as you inhale, peel your eyes open, bring the hands towards the ceiling to meet in prayer, and exhale, take a nice gentle forward fold down onto your mat. Hands to the floor. Inhale, find a halfway lift here, a nice flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Right leg steps to the back of the mat. Nice big long runner's lunge, drop down through the back knee. Let's inhale, lift the arms. Now on the exhale, bring the right hand to the back of the right thigh, left arm reaches towards the ceiling. Take a nice deep breath, take that little back bend on the inhale. Exhale, the left hand comes down. We windmill the right hand down. Tucking the toes on that right leg, lift the right knee and slide your left leg to the back of the mat. Find your plank pose here, high or low. So from here, you can stay in high plank or drop the knees to come to low plank. Totally your choice, wherever you are. Take a breath in. Now let's lower all the way to the mat. Find your cobra once again, hands a fraction wider than your shoulders. Inhale, peel your chest off the mat. 
And exhale, lower down. Hands under shoulders, tuck your toes, lift through your plank, high or low if you need here. Exhale, back, find your downward facing dog. Look between your hands, walk, step, jump your feet to the front of the mat with your next inhale. Exhale, chest onto thighs and take that nice slow spiral roll as you inhale. Bone stacks on bone, hands meet in prayer, tall mountain pose. Exhale, fall back down onto your mat, tipping from your hips, bend your knees as much as you need to. Inhale to find your flat back. Exhale, forward fold and left leg this time steps to the back of the mat, nice big long runners lunge. Drop through your back knee. Inhale, lift the arms. We exhale, bring the left hand to the back of the left thigh. Take a breath in, take a little back bend, draw that right arm back. And then on the exhale, let the right hand come down, windmill the left hand down, tuck the toes on the left foot, slide that right leg to the back of the mat. Find your plank, high or low. Take a breath in. On the breath out, lower to the floor. Find your cobra, hands are fashion wider than your shoulders. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, lower down. Hands under shoulders, tuck your toes, lift straight or plank, high or low with an inhale. Exhale back, find your downward facing dog. Let's now look between our hands. We can walk, step, jump our feet to the front of the mat with that inhale. Exhale, chest onto thighs. Take a nice slow spiral roll. As you inhale, hands meet in prayer. Exhale, hands to the heart. Take a breath, just one breath. I'm just moving around a little bit here so you can see different angles. Now let's take a swan dive this time. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, lift the chest, arms out wide. We swan dive down onto the mat. Inhale, halfway lift, forward fold. Exhale, hands back to the floor. Right leg steps to the back of the mat. Keep the right knee lifted. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, sink into our present lunge. Now, we're just going to inhale straight through the front leg. Exhale, sink down. And can we do that again? Inhale. And exhale. So one more time, inhale. And as you exhale this time and sink down, can you take that right hand to the back of the right thigh? Lifting that left arm up. Squeezing those inner thighs together. Taking a tiny little back bend here. Take a breath in. And on the breath out, left hand come. We windmill the right hand. We slide that left leg to the back of the mat. Find a plank here, high or low. Take a breath in. On the breath out, lower all the way to the floor. Now let's take the hands to the side of the body this time. Palms face the ceiling. Engage your core and as you inhale, thighs, torso, arms float off the mat. Fingers and toes draw to the wall behind, crown of the head to the wall in front. Shalambhasana or locust pose. Take a nice deep breath in. On the breath out, lower back to your mat. Hands under shoulders. Tuck your toes, lift through your plank. High or low your choice. Exhale back. Find your downward facing dog. And with your next inhalation, walk, step, or jump your feet to the front of the mat. Now chest onto thighs. Nice, slow, spinal roll. Finding that tall mountain pose, hands meet in prayer. Exhale, bring the hands to your heart. Let's take that swan dive once again. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, swan dive back down onto your mat. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, forward fold. Left leg this time steps to the back of the mat. Nice big long runners lunge. Keep the knee lifted. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, we sink down to Anjaniyasana. Now we're going to inhale straight through the front leg. Exhale, sink. Do that again. Inhale straight through the front leg. Exhale, down. One more time. Inhale, straighten through the front leg. On the exhale, as we sink down, we'll take that left hand to the back of the left side. Draw the right arm back and take a little bit of a back bend here. Gaze forward. Take a breath in. On the breath out, right hand comes down first. Windmill the left hand. 
When both hands are on the mat, step that right foot to the back of the mat, find your plank, high or low. Take a breath in. On the breath out, lower all the way to the floor. So can you now bring your hands and interlace them over the buttocks, palms of the hands reach together. Variation to Shalambhasana. As you inhale, thighs, torso lift off the mat, thumbs draw towards the wall behind. So feel your shoulders come down away from the ears and your shoulder blades draw in towards your spine, crown of the head towards the front of the room. Lift a little more through the thighs, lift a little more through the chest, take a nice deep breath in. On the breath out, lower to the floor. Hands under shoulders. Now tuck your toes, lift through your low plank. As you inhale, now on the exhale, just come back and sit in your child's pose, just for a breath or two, before we take our warrior two flow. One more breath, one more breath. And this will be our last flow. So as you inhale, lift back to your tabletop, tuck your toes and exhale back to find your downward facing dog. Now from our downward facing dog, can we inhale, take the right leg up towards the ceiling, bend the knee. Exhale, draw the knee in towards the chest. That's high your curl. So see as I shift the weight forward. Inhale, send the leg up, bend the knee. High on the toes of the left foot, draw the knee into the chest and start to shift the weight forward. We're going to let that foot land between our hands. Inhale, send the leg back, bend the knee. Exhale, knee towards the chest. Now we step the foot between our hands at the front of the mat. If it doesn't make it, pick it up and move it along. We want knee tracking over ankle. Drop that back heel now. As you inhale, lift the arms. And as you exhale, we sink into warrior two. So slide your back heel back a little. Your front heel is in line with the arm. Your chest is facing me, but your hips are a little on an angle. Bit of naturalness through the hips. Relax your shoulders. See if you can still see your big toe, that your knee hasn't come over the big toe. If it has, draw the knee back just a little. Look down your front hand to your middle finger. That's where your gaze is. Inhale, flip the front palm. Exhale, let's reverse the warrior. So nice openness through that right side in that reverse warrior. Left hand can come to the small of your back. Inhale, come back through your warrior two. And exhale, let the front forearm slide down onto the front thigh. Back arm now reaches. So this is our Pajra Konasana wide leg side angle pose. Dip the little pinky and gaze underneath the arm. One more breath. And then inhale, lift the torso. And exhale, let's find our way back to our warrior two. One more breath. As you take an inhale, let the right hand come down, windmill the left hand, turn onto the ball of that left foot, and we'll slide that right foot to the back of the mat to find our plank. Now, you can take a cobra, or you could try an up dog with me. Take a breath in, on the breath out. We lower about halfway. Then we send the weight forward onto the tops of our feet and lift to find our upward facing dog hips off the floor. Take a breath in, roll back onto your toes and lift back on the breath out to down dog. Now, for the sake of, <laughs> you're gonna stay here for one breath and I'm gonna turn around so that you will see me when we take the opposite side. So we're going to take the left side now. So from your down dog, inhale, take the left leg towards the ceiling, bend the knee. Exhale, draw the knee to chest. Start to shift the leg forward. Inhale, send that leg back. These are tiger curls. Bend the knee. Exhale, knee to chest. Weight comes forward. One more time. Inhale, send that leg back. Bend the knee. Exhale, knee to chest. Just put between our hands at the front of the mat. Again, help it along if it doesn't make it. Drop the back heel. Inhale, lift. Exhale, sink into that warrior two. Now we're on the other side. 
I've just changed and moved myself around the mat so that I'm facing the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Check your alignment. Maybe you slide that back heel back a little. It doesn't need to be parallel with the short end of your mat. It can be a little bit further back. Lining the front heel up with the arch of the back foot. Softening in to that nice bent left leg. Relaxing the shoulders. You can move a little bit. Make sure they're nice and soft. Can you see a big toe if you look over your front knee? If not, maybe the knee needs to be moved back. Gaze down the middle finger. Let's dance to the warrior. Inhale, flip the front palm. Exhale and reverse our warrior. We're looking for a beautiful stretch down the left side of the body. Right hand can support the lumbar spine, the lower back if you need to or want to. Inhale, come back through warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. Exhale, left hand finds that left thigh, right hand reaches for our wide leg side angle pose, Pajwa. Dip the pinky, take a little gaze under the heel. Take a breath. Now with your next inhale, can you draw your right hand to the floor and bring your toes to the corner of your mat here. We're just going to find goddess pose. So from those nice bent legs, can you inhale, straighten through the legs, bring the hands to meet in prayer, and exhale, sink into your goddess pose. And then inhale, lift the arm. Exhale, sink. One more time, inhale. Now hands meet in prayer, on the exhale, as you sink, draw the hands just towards the heart and separate them so they rest on your sides. We're just going to take a little bit of a shoulder stretch here. So can you sink a little more into your goddess pose? Take a breath in. On the breath out, let your left shoulder reach towards the middle. Turn and look over your right shoulder. Inhale, come back through center. Exhale, the right shoulder comes to the middle. We turn and look over the Inhale, exhale, left shoulder to the middle. Inhale, come back through center. Exhale, relax. Come back through center with your inhale. Exhale, go a little deeper into goddess pose. Bring your hands back to prayer. And then with your next inhalation, straighten through the legs. Let the fingers touch. Now as you exhale, can you find your way back to warrior two? Slide the right leg back. The toes of the left foot come forward, our hands come parallel to the floor. And then let your left hand come down, windmill the right hand down. Turn onto the ball of your right foot. We're going to slide the left leg back to find downward facing dog. Take a little pin. Now I'm going to come front on so you can see this one. It's a little tricky. Well, not really. Can you slide your left foot behind your right hand? and your right foot behind your left hand and take a seat and maybe we can find our cow face pose or maybe we just find a cross-legged pose. I tricked you there. I've always wanted to do this in a yoga class and normally I have to do one side by one side. Today's the day I show you my party trick. So this is cow face pose where we try to get one knee on, front, on top of the other. It's a little difficult for some, so that if that's okay, just bring your, your ankle onto the top of the thigh. We're not going to be here for long, but I do get to show you my party trick, which is exciting for me. Take your breath in here. You can just take hold of the tops of the feet and on the breath out, can you lower that chest down over the thigh? And feel like you're sort of trying to draw the feet apart from each other here. Relax the shoulders. One more breath. And then slowly, we're going to lift the torso. Now, I'll guide you through this as best I can, because I know some of you aren't so comfortable in our cow face pose. But we're going to take the other side. And so we come forward, stay in cow face pose, tuck your toes into the mat, yeah? Then we lift the knees off the floor and we're going to twist to the right. So let your hands walk around. 
balls of feet, turn on the balls of your teeth, turn all the way to the back of the room, turn on the balls of your feet, turn on the balls of your feet, and now we're on the other side. Woohoo! That's my party trick. How to go from cow face pose on one side to the other. I know you're all clapping for me. I'm clapping for me. Very exciting. So now my right knee is on top of my left knee, whereas previously my left knee was on top of my right knee. Let's bring the hands to the, or you might find that. Get that at all. I apologize. You can watch the video and, and have a practice. It's more simple than it looks and sounds once you're actually doing it. Let's take a breath in and on the breath out, let's lower that chest. I think I've got a bit carried away with time today. So I understand if you have to leave. I'm used to the 90 minute classes now that we are having on Mondays and Fridays. One more breath, one more breath. And then let's use that next inhalation to lift up. Now we can take the hands behind us now and uncross the feet and bring them to the and a little side to side movement. So how good is having two mats? When I make a cross with my mat, I can move all the way along the mat and everything feels supported and um, cushiony. It's really cool. So I'm gonna turn again and let's heel toe the feet back into the center. Inhale to lift the arms and exhale. Let's roll the back. Go nice and slow. And when you're fully landed, draw one knee at a time in towards your chest and give the knees a little squeeze and take that little rock from side to side and maybe hands onto the knees just to take a few massaging circles, just maybe three or four in one direction and then pause and you can change direction here. 27. All right. So we are running a bit late today. I do apologize. Let's pause with the knees into the chest and give them a nice gentle squeeze. Perhaps you lift your head and shoulders off the floor, forehead and knees draw towards each other. Take a nice deep breath in. And then on the breath out, lower the head and shoulders, lower the feet. We'll just take a twist through the spine. So arms come out to the side. Lift your hips, slide them a few centimeters to the and can we take those cross legs gently to the left yeah. and if you're comfortable your neck feels okay you might turn your neck to the right but you can keep it just gaze neutral maybe just gazing towards the ceiling your choice one more breath one more breath And then lift the hips, slide them a few centimeters to the left, cross the left leg over the right leg and let those cross legs fall gently to the right now. Your head can be neutral or maybe you leave it turned to the left, just depends how your neck is feeling. I find turning to the left, my neck is quite comfortable, but turning to the right, it's not feeling so good. So there's something going on. Not bad, just an observation. This is what I mean, we observe how our body shows up for us every day and every day it's a little different and that's okay. One more breath. And then roll back onto your back and uncross the legs and lift the hips and slide them into the center of the mat. Now let's take happy baby, draw the knees into the chest, separate your legs, take hold of the ankles or outer blades, draw the feet up towards the ceiling. So legs stay bent, we draw the thighs and knees towards the floor, tailbone forward, separate the feet. And, and maybe you take the little rock from side to side. If you're a really happy baby, it's a nice way to open up again into the To and straighten the legs and lift head and shoulders off the floor. That's just something I like to do. And when you're ready, draw your feet back together and your knees back together and then hug the knees in. One little last opportunity to find this little C pod, this little cosmic egg shape, forehead and knees towards each other. Take a nice deep breath in. 
On the breath out, lower your head and shoulders. Let your feet touch down below the buttocks. One foot at a time extends to the bottom of the mat. Feet open out to the side, arms to the sides of the body. Flip the palms so palms face the ceiling. So I just acknowledge that all of the work has now been done. There's nothing left for you to do here, just to be on your mat and to be in this space and to absorb all of the gifts and, and goodness that our practice of yoga has to offer. So take some time here just to soften into the body, to really just sink and let go. Let your body start to soften, allow a level of heaviness through the bones so you feel like you're sinking through the floor but a silky softness to your skin almost as if the skin has become this soft layer of silk that's just been draped over your body and as your thoughts arise Welcome them, welcome them. Don't try to shut them out, but just observe. Ah, hello. Don't give them any of your energy or anything further than a welcome and an observation. Don't try and push them away. And maybe they just kind of float off. Engaging with them beyond a welcome can create some busyness in our mind. And I think if we really want to drop deep, so sort of letting anything out, but just allowing everything in the heaviness, the softness, the openness. the whole back of the body dropping a little, feeling the muscles perhaps like a melting of the body. And then when you feel ready, you could start to just slowly allow your breath to begin to deepen. And just start to bring your awareness back to your space on the mat and your position in the room. And then letting that awareness from that point begin to expand beyond the four corners of the mat that you are on to the four corners of the space that you are in. And beyond that, to the world again outside around you. Notice the little sounds as they drop in and out, flow in and out. Trying not to label or put a name to them quite yet. And then let the sound of the bells guide you back to your physical body once you can hear on your space.
start to invite some little flickers of movement and energy into your fingers and your toes and rotate through your wrists and your ankles. And let your head gently move from side to side. And when you're ready, extend your hand for the head so your fingers reach to the wall behind and your toes reach to the wall in front. And take a nice deep breath, allowing your body to become as long as it possibly can and just feel yourself re-emerge, re-entering into your day or evening or whatever time you're doing the class, if you're watching the recording. And then bend your knees and make your way over to your favorite side. So <laughs> your head and your upper arm and your forearm with eyes closed down, just take a few moments here to regroup and to regather. And then as you feel start to a seated position once again. And eyes closed down, bring your hands into prayer so your thumbs rest gently in on your stern. I've unmuted you all, so perhaps we can Om and Shanti together if you choose. It was a suggestion the other night that I unmute you so we can hear each other Om and Shanti. And I thought that was a really beautiful suggestion. So from here, just take a moment to drop into your heart space and choose just one thing in this moment that you are grateful for. Just pop and notice what emotions or feelings that evokes for you there. Is it, it could be joy or love or bliss or happiness, relief or a release or excitement or whatever it is let that build and build and then when it overflows let it just spread to every cell in your body through every molecule of your dna so you feel washed with those emotions and feelings that that gift of gratitude has brought to you and you get to take day into it you come into contact with so if you would like to join me in closing the class, together we can chant one Om and three Shanti. You don't have to though, nothing that we do in yoga is compulsory, but if you'd like to join, take a nice deep breath in. And together we can chant three Shantis, take another inhale. Shanti, 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 Shanti. Thank you everyone. Namaste. Have a really, really, really lovely rest of your day. And I hope to see some of you on Friday night for our nice, gentle, slow flow. I'll stop the recording and then I can have a little. Chitty chat. Some people had to leave early.